Good afternoon and welcome to The Rundown. I am your host, Captivating Christian, and here are some of your top stories for today, September the 22nd. The Justice Department brands New York City an anarchist jurisdiction, targeting federal funds. The Louisville police declare a state of emergency ahead of Breonna Taylor's decision. Joe Biden could still win the Supreme Court with a Stacey Abrams as his nominee. After the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Democratic nominee has a chance to make a bold statement. Florida governor makes it easier for drivers to run over Black Lives Matter protesters. And a New York City police officer arrested for allegedly working as an agent of the Chinese government. And the best of my love, Pamela Hutchinson of The Emotions dies at age 61. Let's get to the news. New York City was among three cities labeled anarchist jurisdictions by the Justice Department on Sunday and targeted to lose federal money for failing to control protesters and defunding police. The Post had learned that Portland, Oregon and Seattle, Washington were among the other two states on the list, which was approved by the U.S. Attorney General William Barr. When state and local leaders impede on their own law enforcement officers and agencies from doing their job, it endangers innocent citizens who deserve to be protected, including those who are trying to peacefully assemble and protest, Barr said in a statement released on Monday. It is not clear what funds are likely to be cut, but among the money from New York City that could be massive given that the Big Apple gets seven billion dollars in annual federal aid. Designation comes after President Donald Trump earlier this month issued a memo for financial retribution against cities that have slashed their police budgets during the crime wave and tolerating violent protests sparked by the May killing of George Floyd by Minnesota police. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good afternoon. And welcome to The Rundown. I am once again your host, Captivating Christian. And this is a segment where I like to just talk about and give my personal opinion on the views of the articles from this afternoon's show. And first, let's get some business out of the way. Welcome to all new subscribers. Please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully you like the commentary and the content here at Cap Hill on CCN TV. And if so, you can hit that bell notification as well as that thumbs up button, and you'll never miss another update here at the Hill. And to my state reps, those of you in the chat, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is always a pleasure to see you all. So let's get started and have some fun, shall we? All right, and don't mind the hair. Actually, I, I washed it, so. It's, it's up there. But anyway, let's get Wait, to this. So in this first article, it seems like our good old friend Bill Barr, otherwise a.k.a. Fred Flintstone, is at it again, along with, of course, our president, who's always telling me. Don't be rude. Yeah, is at it again. So New York has been named, or New York City rather, has been named an anarchist jurisdiction. Now what that means is basically that they'll try to withhold federal aid and federal funding to New York City and basically undercoverly all the Democratic uh, cities that he figured wouldn't vote for him anyway that were protesting against the death of George Floyd and other acts of police brutality against unarmed black people or people of color uh, that have died or been uh, brutalized by these authorities and they saw fit to you know kind of defund a lot of this police department uh, because they get tons of money and you know n nothing's being done as far as you know they just act recklessly now of course Bill Barr 
a.k.a. Mr. Fred Flintstone, said, oh, it, you know, well, uh, it, it, the, it, to undercut to the people um, who the police officers protect and to go against the police was, you know, definitely not a good thing. And in fact, that, you know, people are allowed to peacefully protest. It's just the violence that they uh, have an issue with. Um, but yeah, like I call crap on that just simply because um, you know what you're doing. You're going after uh, cities of mayors and some governors who are against your tactics of um, over-policing and being a military uh, presence uh, to civilians, to everyday citizens. Um, of course, it is something to make sure that he continues to protect uh, his his base of people who are so afraid that somebody's gonna come and snatch their stuff. Um, but I mean, get over it. It's not happening. I mean, people are actually protesting against the brutality of the police and you want more police to come and kill more people and have more no-knock warrants, murdering young women for no reason and kind of getting off uh, scot-free? I don't think so. I think the whole idea is stupid. Um, I, I think pe if people haven't noticed it, they will start to wake up and notice it, especially when they know that their funds are gone, that you had a stupid. president who was actually, um, along with an even dumber, but uh, going along with it, attorney general Boy. who just um, will do anything for power. And this is exactly uh, how you read in the textbooks of, like, Germany during the days of Adolf Hitler. Like, this is crazy that we are even doing this, that you are using money to break people to your submission and the what how you want them to run their own cities and states. And mind you, the cities and states are supposed to be separate. Isn't that the whole... Republican mantra that the the uh, local state governments should be able to govern how they choose, but if they don't govern in the way Donald Trump and Bill Barr thinks that they should, then uh, they should be oppressed. I don't understand. Am I the only one that's awake right now looking at this? Hello? I mean, it's crazy. And of course, Donald Trump in his good old fashion will tell you that everybody is wrong because he's the only right one. But this is definitely how um, Adolf Hitler rose to power with uh, shutting down a lot of the opposition. The same thing that over in Russia, Vladimir, Pat Vladimir, Vladimir, excuse me, blah, 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 blah. Vladimir Putin has been doing for decades. Um, you know, so I don't know. I really don't know what rabbit hole this leads us down, but it's definitely a steep one. Um, so I, I would, uh, it's a lot of money that New York will be possibly losing about $7 million for defunding the police. Mind you, New York alone, their budget for policing is like three and four times that amount. So, I mean, a little bit of funding going to some public schools or going to some um, organizations that help with community outreach um, to better serve the communities that these police uh, officers have ransacked, I think it should be done. I think there's no other way. If you're trying to heal the communities, the best way to heal the communities is actually go to the communities and reach out instead of trying to create an even greater police force to police civilians, no less. We're not talking about military operatives. We're talking about civilians, which is crazy to me. But anyway, um, on to the next.
The Louisville Metro Police Department is currently under a state of emergency, according to an internal memo released on Monday. Declared by the Chief of Police, the decision comes in anticipation of the announcement in the Breonna Taylor case. The declaration means that the departments are operating on emergency staffing and reporting, which cancels off-duty days and previously unapproved vacation requests. The emergency announcement, which does not extend to the city itself, was created to ensure departments had the appropriate level of staffing to provide the public safety services. Behind the memo is a city holding its breath. Taylor, the 26-year-old black female emergency technician who was shot and killed in her Louisville home when officers executed a no-knock search warrant. Taylor was shot several times and died before officers attempted to give her emergency aid. According to dispatch reports from the Louisville Carnage Journal, while one officer involved in Taylor's death was fired, the other two remaining officers still remain on the police force. Six months after her March 13th death, Taylor's case stands distinct as a high-level profile case without resolution. Taylor's family, however, will receive a $12 million settlement from the city for their wrongful death lawsuit. While the settlement also included police reform, the main focus on everyone's mind continues to be the fate of the other officers involved. All right, and in this particular Law and Order uh, article, the Louisville Police Department has basically been on emergency alert, uh, basically some sort of like emergency lockdown um, because the decision on the Breonna Taylor case is about to come down. Now, after days and days and days and days and months even of silence, those crickets from the Justice Department in Louisville after giving Breonna Taylor's family $12 million. Now they want to uh, make a decision and announce it to the public. Now we all know that this is done because we're in an election season and this has gone on long enough that uh, they want to try and clean it up before people actually uh, vote just in case people who have already decided to make their choices change their mind because of how uh, these Republicans in Louisville drag their feet about um, the situation that may in fact turn some people, right? So that's what is going on right here. However, word on the curve is that none of the officers will be charged because, now prepare yourselves, because Breonna Taylor's boyfriend, not knowing who they were because they did not announce themselves, shot at the police officers first, allegedly. So therefore, they would get off on a technicality. I'll wait. But yeah, so that's what it looks like. And that's really what the police are um, like hunkering down for, because um, that's basically what they are worried about, that when they drop this news that none of the officers will be charged. So the two officers that already have jobs will keep their jobs in the police department. And the one officer that was fired, don't know if he will get rehired, but he probably will. So I don't, I see this going a different way. I see this going down that way. And I think that's why, again, that they're kind of buckering down and holding down the hatchets for what's about to come as far as any riots or anything um, that, uh, you know, people may do. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, it's really crazy that, 
you would um, give this family this money and think that that was going to uh, quiet everything down, right? Which was a total fart. And then on top of that, you think now that you gave them the money that this is supposed to, you know, open up the gates and we're all supposed to be holding hands and singing because what? You still killed a person. She was still murdered in cold blood. On top of that, you could have saved her life, um, but instead y'all allowed her to lay there and die. So yeah, that's the that's the most craziest, gruesome part of this whole thing that um that was allowed to happen and go forward. So yeah, I think that definitely um yeah, this will definitely not go down well. Um my hope is that instead of running to the streets to destroy the cities, and especially destroy cities where we live, how about we just take that same energy, make sure we go to those polls and vote. People like Mitch McConnell, the attorney general for uh, the Louisville, Kentucky area, all down ballot, up ballot, whomever is a played a role in this, they need to be out. Excuse me, if they're up for election, they got to go. And as simple as that. And there's nothing else to say, nothing else to be said, but make sure we just go to the polls. Other than that, all that marching, talking, and, and tearing up stuff will just give them the ammunition that that they need to continue to prosecute us and oppress us. So what we need to do is show up to the vote ballot and use our voices. Other than that, if you're not about that, then you're not a part of the problem. You're a part of, the, if you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. And then for that, you just need to Shut up. and move on with your life. But for those of us who are concerned about it, who don't want it to be our nieces or our nephews, even ourselves, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our aunts, so on and so forth, then we need to make a stand and do something about it. Joe Biden either believes in the pillars of his campaign for presidency or he does not. Either way, the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg on Friday gives him an opportunity, as it does much of America, the occasion to mourn a legal giant. Most people know the stakes of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death gives President Donald Trump one last chance to name a justice for an election he is likely to lose. It gives Republicans one last chance to cement a majority in the court, which they want desperately, having lost the popular vote in six of the last seven presidential elections. With an electorate now too divided, educated, and liberal on social issues to put many Republicans in the White House, there likely won't choose another one soon. So Trump will nominate someone before the election and the GOP controlled Senate will try to confirm them before giving away to a newly elected likely Democrat controlled Senate in January. Biden can seize an initiative from Trump by announcing his own shadow nominee so voters can choose. And that nominee should be former Georgia legislator and gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams. Okay, this particular article was kind of interesting. Okay, so we know that the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has sent um, everybody, including myself, into a tailspin of worry a little bit. Yes, because, um, yeah, I pray for that woman every day because uh, I know what was coming around the bend. If, in fact, the Lord called her home a little early, then uh, it was on and popping. And it is. Um, the Republicans are reneging on their promise 
of course, and we are sitting here really thinking that they were going to actually stick to their promise. We know why they made it, because they didn't want that black man to have another inch of power or do another thing or vote in another whatever uh, as long as they could help it and they had the majority. So we are the ones that look you stupid um, for even thinking that they would hold up to their end of the bargain. So at this point, I think we need to um, stop playing games. We don't need to go as dirty as they are, but we need to stop playing games and thinking that these people are people of good faith because they're not. So this particular article talks about Joe Biden and his promise, right, to not only fill a justice seat by either creating another opening for a justice or two, um, but actually having a a uh, woman, of course, in celebration of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But his promise in his campaign was not only to have a woman, but to have the first black woman a uh, Supreme Court justice. All right? I know. Look at that. So the talk of it is to, and I think this might be a good, this might be a good little trick here. So here, we'll hear what it is a little bit. So the trick is, or the, the strategy, I won't even say the trick, but the strategy is to say, you know, go on what your, what your spiel is, that you're going to have a woman and it'd be a woman of color, right? But then let it be Stacey Abrams. She won, she pretty much won her gubernatorial race against Brian Kemp, but Brian Kemp was still the um, Secretary of State for the state of Georgia. So he oversaw the election and he purged a half a million votes, which was 500,000 voters from the rolls, therefore causing the loss on Stacey Abrams' side because of many of those voters were registered voters. Okay, and by the time they went through all the red tape, he had already won, took it, and stole it. Damn! I know, right? Ain't that crazy? But that's exactly what happened. So, um, I think that by naming Stacey Abrams, you have the state of Go you have the state of Georgia going out to vote again and pushing that drive. To ensure that, okay, if she didn't win the gubernatorial race, God damn it, we're going to give her, we're going to send her off to that Justice Ruth Ginsburg seat in glory. Because we're going to give her, or we're going to give Joe Biden Georgia. We're going to make Georgia purple. Um And I think that's, I think that's possible. I mean, as close as it was, I think it's possible. I'm sure that governor will be tearing his hair out trying to get... Um, you know, the rig on it. But I think, again, if the people actually push and, and go hard, something can move. I don't think that nothing is impossible. I think we need to stop kind of, um, you know, being so timid with these people because they're not being timid with us. So we need to, you know, go balls to the walls and just like they do us to them and um, we just need to go for it. Uh, that means knocking on doors and doing what we have to do and, and throwing money into the campaign to make sure, then by all means. Yeah, we need to do what we need to do. Uh, it's, it's enough time for us to be sitting around and being quiet. quiet that we actually need to be motivated. And this is the motivation we need that even if it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to stop uh, this nominational process for this justice, but we can get Joe Biden in to get not only another justice seat, but possibly even two justice seats by flipping the Senate uh, Democratic as well as keeping the House um, Democratic, then hell, by all means, we need to do it. It is Governor Ron DeSantis just introduced new legislation that would make peaceful protesting more difficult because he wants nothing more than to get a pat on the head from someone in the Trump administration. DeSantis told reporters that during a news briefing at the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the bill will charge protesters with felonies for damaging properties 
and inflicting injuries, as well as sentenced them to mandatory jail time for hitting a law enforcement officer. The bill, which state lawmakers will consider during next year's legislative season, would also bar protesters who commit crimes from receiving state benefits or working for the state. The bill would also allow drivers to no longer be liable for injuries or deaths caused by fleeing to safety from a mob. If you organize or fund a protest that happens to turn violent because armed men with gas masks and weapons were there and paid for by tax dollars, you will and could be charged with RICO liability. Yes, the infamous mob rule that argues that any individual is a part of a corrupt organization. Despite the majority of protests being peaceful, DeSantis and his President Donald Trump have insisted that the problems aren't the police killings by unarmed black men, but rather the senseless murders of statues and property. All right, in this particular um article is about uh, none other than Ron DeSantis and for him he gets the uh oh retard alert uh oh retard alert uh oh retard alert so he has come up with legislation that would basically uh, allow first of all any protesters uh, that actually protest police brutality uh, even wanting to defund the police you would definitely be arrested if some violence uh, happened at your uh, protests. And as we know, police have been dressing up. Undercover police officers have been dressing up in protest attire if it's all black and causing violence and then kind of dipping off. But in Florida, if this passes, that would mean that everybody gets rounded up. And if you have a government job or a state job, you would lose it. If you're on uh, any kind of public assistance or state benefits or anything, you would lose that as well. So basically, what they're enacting is an executive order. Execute Order 66. And of course, Donald Trump couldn't be more happier and gleeful about this. Oh, hey. But um, so, yeah. And then on top of that, here we have another situation where in which uh, people get off the hook. So if you happen to be in a vehicle and you plow through some protesters, no longer will you be liable for running over those people. In Florida, if this passes, you get basically a green light to run over people if they happen to be on the street that you want to go down instead of going around them, you can just plow straight through them and then say you was uh, fearful for your life. And, you know, that's why you kept going. Damn! Yeah, and this is the kind of legislation and the kind of governor that Florida wanted. Oh, hell no! Yeah, so basically, to Ron DeSantis, this little song bit goes out to you. Because, um, yeah, I, I really, I don't see it. I don't even know how you even got as far as you did in the world, in your life. I'm confused because I honestly don't think that there's nobody upstairs. I, I don't, I don't think so. There's no way in the world you can sit here, and, and as far as legislators, that you can sit here and, 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 and let that pass. That is crazy that, in fact, that it's something that they're going to be arguing over in Florida in the next couple of months. It is absolutely ridiculous. I think everybody in Florida at this point, you look you stupid because I'd rather have the, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather just... Run, bitch! If I was in Florida, I'd do it now um, because I see a lot of people being uh, run over um, in protest just because others didn't want to see it or don't want to see it. I'd rather have, uh, what's his face? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I really don't. 
It makes no sense. I cannot believe Ron DeSantis would even entertain that. I mean, if this ain't white supremacist and a white power move, I don't know what is. This is the biggest kind of slap in the face to any amendment. We sit there talking about somebody going after your second amendment rights to bear arms. This is the biggest attack on the first amendment right for your freedom of speech and right to assembly that we can we have seen in our lifetime. Biggest one. It's crazy. I just can't. I really can't. Hey, this is Captain Raiden Christian here to remind you to tune in to Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. You never know what you might get. An NYPD officer faces a variety of charges after being accused of acting as an agent for the Chinese government. CBS New York reporting, according to prosecutors, Bangwenaji Angwang, age 33, was in regular contact with a member of the Chinese consulate and provided intelligence on ethnic Tibetan in New York City. The federal complaint also alleges that Ang Wang committed wire fraud against the U.S. Department of Defense, gave false statements, and objected an official proceeding. Ang Wang's worked in the Community Affairs Unit at the 111th Precinct in Queens and is listed as a staff sergeant uh, with the U.S. Army Reserves stationed out of Fort Dix, New Jersey. In an airborne civil affairs battalion, according to officials, he holds a secret level security clearance as part of his job with the Army Reserve. Ang Wang is a Tibetan native of China and a naturalized U.S. citizen who resides in Willowton Park, New York. The complaint said that prosecutors claim that since at least 2014, Ang Wang has reported on the activities of ethnic Tibetans and others in New York City's metropolitan area to the consulate and spotted and assessed potential ethnic Tibetan intelligence sources in New York City's metropolitan area and beyond. The complaint also alleges that Ang Wang provided the consulate officials access to senior NYPD officials thought invitations to official NYPD events. None of these activities, however, fall within the scope of Ang Wang's official duties and responsibilities with either the NYPD or the United States Army Reserve. The complaint also went on to say, Ang Wang was ordered detained by the federal judge at a virtual court appearance on Monday afternoon. He will receive a further sentence on bail, but no date has been set. If convicted, Ang Wang could face up to 55 years in prison. So we have this NYPD officer who um, was secretly working with the Chinese government and given uh, the locations of many Tibetan citizens to the Chinese and other uh, government secrets that he had gotten through his clearance um, and basically just, I guess, selling secrets and, and, and selling things. Now, the funny thing to me is that this person... Um, is a foreigner who's who is of foreign descent who does this who's who's committed this crime allegedly and um yeah we're just now finding out about it and he's been doing this for a while and he's been able to have access to places and invite 
uh, people from the Chinese consulate to places involving the NYPD as well as things that were not basically on his uh, credential list. Like he had access to a lot of things that he shouldn't have necessarily had access to. So the question is, how did he get access to those things? And why was he involving the Chinese government in selling secrets? That usually comes with money. So it's like who money or some kind of holding something over someone's head. So it's kind of like, well, what were you doing? Who was helping you? All this kind of situation. Like, what? What is going on? Um, you know, this is really crazy. It's, it's, it's a really tough time. You see all this espionage and things going on. And, you know, everybody's kind of looking the other way because you're so focused on this one thing that all these things are kind of happening and, and, and coming out. Um, I... Just crazy. I mean, furthermore, another reason why the police need to be defunded and there needs to be a new system because it is so much power being a police officer that you can actually do something like that. Like, that doesn't make any sense that a police officer can engage himself almost in State Department stuff if he has enough credentials at least to get a little sneak peek at, you know, certain things that he's not supposed to. Due to his military status, it is the reason why he was able to um, get some, I guess, top level, top secret information. But still, some of the stuff that he was sharing was way over his pay grade. So that goes to show you that it was somebody else in the loop that was feeding him the information. And he was, in fact, giving it to uh, the consulate. So it's more investigation that needs to be done. I think that's a whole nother law and order moment um but uh yeah i'm just waiting for some more stuff because i'm sure there's some more stuff to come out but lord you need to call on black jesus because i don't know it's this it makes you really want to be like Run, bitch. Run. <laughs> and get the hell out of dodge because this is so crazy but anyway And on to the next. And be sure to join Jay Wilson, Rebel Son, the official King Payne, Conscious TV, and Captivating Christian. This and every Thursday at 645 Central Standard Time, 745 Eastern Standard Time for the Gentleman's Panel. Well, we are not afraid to go there and discuss an array of topics. See you there. Pamela Hutchinson was a part of a soulful singing group family trio called The Emotions, which com was comprised of her sisters, Wanda and Sheila. Together they sang the 1977 R&B soul classic, Best of My Love, along with other hits. According to the band's official Facebook page, Hutchinson died on Friday. She was 61. Pam succumbed to health challenges that she's been battling for several years, the post read. Now our beautiful sister will sing among the angels in the heavenly peace. And this particular last story, um, this song always brings uh, great emotions and memories. Um, we mourn the loss of Pamela Hutchinson, from the group Emotion, she died at the age of 61 on Friday, the same day that Luce, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, excuse me, uh, the Supreme Court Justice, had passed. Um, and the reason why, I never knew who really sung the song and as young as I was, but just always hearing it, um, especially at barbecues and family functions, it always makes me think of my parents, especially my dad coming in acting a fool and my mom making this face like, oh God, you're so embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> as you know, he would kind of, you know, tell her to get up and dance with him or he'd be coming in from like the store or something. And, uh, you know, everybody, hey, you know, that whole thing. And for some reason, this song would be playing. So it brought uh, great memories. Um, 
to her family and her sisters who she sang with for many years. Um, my prayers and thoughts go out to them. And in closing, this part will come first, of course, and um, don't run off quickly. So yet I will be playing a video clip of one of their live performances um, as a tribute to them. And so, yeah, this may not get all that monetized, but so be it. Sometimes we have to um, show honor and respect to uh, our many great and wonderfully talented artists that um, have paved the way for a lot of a lot of us to be able to spread our creativity across the world. So in that, this is my um, homage or respectful honor to her and her um, gifts and talents. All right, so have a blessed day. Peace. Enjoy the video. Once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss 